Where do I even start? Where do I start? <laughs> I mean, so far this year in 2023, right? The governing body leaders, they made three major announcements that should be able to wake up any Jehovah's Witness with common sense, right? Keyword, common, keywords, common sense. Two words, common sense, right? So the first one is they're telling people, they're telling witnesses, you no longer need to put in your time. It's, not, it's no longer mandatory. If you went out in service, sign a check, check a box, right? Check a box. If you went out, if you went out in the service, check a box. If you didn't, check a box. Either way, check a box. Let us know if you went out or not, right? Now, any Jehovah's Witness with common sense, they should say to themselves, hold on, this is optional? I thought we were out here saving lives. I thought we were telling people about the new system that's about to come. So if this new system is so urgent, then why is it optional to check a fucking box? Why Why do we need to check a box? This should be mandatory. We should have to tell everybody, hey, listen, the end is about to come. This is the end of the world. But yet, they are telling people, <laughs> if you went out on service, just check a box. Either you went out or you didn't go out. It, it don't matter no more. It don't matter. Oh, by the way, if you are a pioneer, it matters. It only matters to the pioneers. But if you're a regular publisher, <laughs> Call it a day. Check it a box. Check a box and call it a day. You see, this is where this is when critical thinking skills need to apply. This is when they, this is when critical thinking skills need to come in handy. This is supposed to be an urgent message when witnesses preach the so-called truth. Right. This is supposed to be an urgent message to the entire world. And now your leaders are telling you, oh, just check a box. Check a box. If I was still a Jehovah's Witness to this day, I would be extremely embarrassed and mad at the same time. Because I, I would have realized that I, I wasted and invested all these years for nothing. Right? That's only one. That's only one thing. The second thing that they changed this year, they're telling people, they're telling witnesses, oh, we don't know who God's going to allow in the paradise earth. And we can't even find the words paradise earth in the Bible, right? <laughs> but we don't know who God's going to allow in paradise. And you know what? In fact, God just might allow... Anyone and everyone who sees the signs that we are living in a great tribulation in paradise earth. So once the great tribulation starts, oh, and by the way, we can't find a passage in the Bible where God spoke about people saying peace and security and then the great tribulation is going to happen. We can't find it in the Bible. We just need you guys to believe us, even though we are not inspired by God. Right? So, anywho, anyway, um, that's the second thing that they changed this year. They said that, oh, anyone can come in during the Great Tribulation. Once the Great Tribulation starts, and you see that you see signs that this is the Great Tribulation, anyone can come into the religion. That's the second thing that they changed that should be an eye-opener. And just earlier today, we had the new... Light, the new light, where Stephen Lett said that beards are now allowed. It's a conscious matter, conscious decision. And I had to laugh when I, when I watched this. I was laughing almost to the point where I was tearing, right? It's hilarious. But I said to myself, how is it that all of a sudden... Beards are allowed. When for the longest, I, since Russell Day, right? Since Charles Russell, no one was allowed to wear beards. We have all these illustrations with Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Job, 
everybody, literally everybody back in the day <laughs> had beards. They had full-grown Rick Ross's beards, right? Full-grown beards back in the day. But yet, Joe was doing this men. We can't have beards. We, we, sorry, sorry. We couldn't. Joe's witnesses couldn't have beds, right? I mean, I say we, because I'm not a witness anymore. But Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, they, sorry, they couldn't have beds, right? And there's a situation that came to mind when I when I saw this, when I saw that um, the new the new announcement, right? There's a, something that happened some some years ago. So back in 2014, there was a um. I had a friend that got baptized at the, uh, what's it called? The District of Convention. Sorry, International. So my, my friend at the time, in 2014, she got baptized at the International Convention in Melbourne, Australia, right? So I had friends, Jehovah's Witness friends in New York, my hometown, New York. They, they know me. These, when I say friends, these are older sisters that know... They are like my mom's age, right? They they know me from birth. So anywho, I had um I think it's called delegates. Delegates? Delegates, whatever. But delegates from New York. Um these sisters they sisters know me from birth, right? And they were allowed to go to Australia, uh, Melbourne, Australia for the international, right? As delegates, right? So anywho, they see me and I'm wearing the same exact the whole facial hair. From the mustache down to the goatee. They see this, right? I mean, this was a little shorter. My, my, my goatee was a little shorter. But they're looking at me like, hold on. You're going to the International Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses with a freaking goatee? Little did they know that I was inactive for that. I, I only went to the International in Melbourne, Australia back in 2014. I only went there to see my friend, my JW friend get baptized, Right? And she had to beg me to go with her because I, I wanted nothing to do with witnesses back in, you know, back in 2014. I was done with the organization, but me and his sister met on online, right? We started talking, whatever, and we had some common interests, but I only went because of her because I wanted to support her baptism, but I was inactive. So these witnesses that know me from birth in New York, they traveled all the way as delegates to Melbourne, Australia. They see me with this gold tea and they're looking at me like, hold on, what are you doing for gold tea? What are you doing with all this facial hair? Shave that. You're you're going to the you going to the international of Jehovah's Witnesses with facial hair? Shave that. Right? So out of respect for them, I shaved it. And I wanted to say to them, where in the Bible do you guys, do you sisters see that facial hair is not allowed? Where in the Bible do you see this? I didn't say that to them because they would have they would have slapped me. Sisters from New York don't they don't play they're they're strict right they they're, they're on a, on a different level. <laughs> but I wanted to say that to them and I had to laugh when I saw this announcement today about the governing body leaders changing their doctrine. This new light now it's a conscious matter. You can have facial hair now as a as a minister servant or an elder. And, and now I'm trying to imagine an elder giving a talk with a fucking goatee down the hair, longer than mine. So let's say it's another inch or two longer than mine, right? A facial hair down, uh, a goatee down the hair, right? And now it's a conscious matter. I haven't laughed that hard. When I heard the announcement... My homeboy, who is a, he's an XJW now as well. He's an active, right? He left the organization. He did his research. He realized this is not the truth. And he, he sent that to me. He sent that link to me. You know, no, sorry. First, he texted me. I didn't believe him, right? But he texted me, and then he sent, I said, hey, send me the link. So once he sent me the link, and I went on JW.org, and I saw it for myself, I was like, what the actual fuck? What the fuck is going on? This is some real Twilight Zone shit. First, they tell people your hours are not important anymore. Take a box. If you went out on service, if you tried to save somebody's life, which is supposed to be mandatory, take a box, 
right? First they say that. Then they say anyone can come in at the last minute during the Great Tribulation. Anybody. When 20 years ago, we know that once the Great Tribulation started, the doors were closed. It was done. It's a wrap, right? And now our parents, sorry, I keep saying our, but Jehovah's Witnesses, their parents doesn't matter. You can have a full grown Rick Ross or DJ Khaled um, beard, right? Facial hair, the whole nine. You can have the whole thing going on. And these elders won't even cancel you. You could go on a platform, give a talk. Looking like Rick Ross. Looking like DJ Talent. The whole facial hair, right? Looking like me with all this whole goatee, this whole Kanye West shit going on, right? And you can still be approved as a middle school servant and as an elder. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter. Now, this is where common sense needs to come in handy. This is where people need to have common sense. Because if you are Jehovah's Witness watching, you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself, how is it okay that as of right now, December 2023, 20, it is allowed? Because Stephen Lett said that they, the, the, um, the governing body leaders, they came and they prayed about it. But I didn't hear him say that Jehovah approved it. I didn't hear him say that we, we, we asked Jehovah for direction to see if, if the if the beards are allowed, if facial hair are allowed. I didn't hear him say that. I didn't hear him say we pray to Jehovah for the Holy Spirit to direct us. He didn't say that. All he said was that we as governing body leaders prayed about it. So even if they prayed about it, where was Jehovah previously? Where, where, where was Jehovah from... Charles Russell Day up until Stephen Less Day. Where was Jehovah? Was he given wrong information once again? Because as we know, this new light, new light contradicts old light. If Jehovah's Witnesses, if they are listening to this new light from the governing body leaders, guess what? This new light, this new light that they have, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, it could be something else. And they can say, oh, we was wrong all this time. We have new light. They get 50 years from now, they can say, oh, we have new light. No more beards. No more facial hair. So how do Jehovah's Witnesses know what to believe in if these governing body leaders tell them, hey, listen, we're not inspired by God, but you have to listen to us. Like I said, where is the fucking common sense? There's no common sense with this religion. There's no common sense. If you have to blindly believe in men, and these men tell you flat out, they tell you from the jump start, we're not inspired by God. If you listen to us, that's on your own discretion. That's your prerogative. <laughs> if you listen to us, that's your prerogative. Right? Because we get it wrong. We're not, we're, not, we're, we're not inspired by God. We get it wrong. We make mistakes. So if you listen to us, that's 100% on you. Where's the common sense? So before I joined the XJW community, right? I've done my research. I've woken up from this cult. And once I looked at the 2017 Watchtower article... Where it clearly it clearly says the governing body leaders are not inspired by God and that they are infallible, right? I believe that's from the February. Don't don't take my word, but I believe it's from the February 2017 Wasar article. I know it's 27 the year is 2017, right? But anywho, um this new governing body leader, he pretty much mimicked that that Wasar article. He said, Oh, we with governing body leaders. We are not inspired by God and we are infallible. So my question to Jehovah's Witnesses is, why are you guys listening to them? That makes no sense. And now with this whole beard situation, that should be a wake-up call. Any Jehovah's Witness with common sense with a brain in their heads, right? They should be asking themselves, oh, well, yeah, it's nice that we can, you know, that, that the men in the organization can now wear beards. That's nice. But... It was never scriptural in the first place. So why is it some 
of importance right now. If it was never, if they can never back that up in the Bible in the first place, how can they back it up now? Hmm. If you are Jehovah's Witness watching this, ask yourself that question. Where did they get this from? That is how they, that is how they, they, they are able to change all this light. They, they're able to get rid of old light and have new light. Because the majority of the things they can't come up with, right? The blood doctrine. They use a scripture that's out of context. The fellowship of people, right? Another scripture that's out of context, right? <laughs> this freaking... Um, the... This whole beard situation. There's no there's no scripture that even supports that. There's no scripture in the Bible that says, "Oh, you can't have a beard to serve God faithfully and loyally." No, there's no scripture in the Bible that supports that. That is how that that these leaders are able to use scriptures to suit their needs. But it was never biblical in the first place. Never, not once. But when I saw that earlier today online, I, I was laughing almost to the point of tears. And my homeboy, I had a few people text me saying this, right? A few people text me. I didn't believe them until I had to, I had to look it up for myself on JW.org, right? And it was quite comical because I, I was putting, my, putting myself in the shoes of a Jehovah's Witness, right? I said to myself, if I was still an indoctrinated witness, if I was still a brainwashed Jehovah's Witness that believe everything that these men are saying, everything that these men are saying, right? And now they are saying that they made three different announcements that contradicted their past from 100 years. So if I'm listening to these men and they are consistently and constantly getting it wrong and shifting their doctrines time after time, why am I still listening to like, why am I still listening to these men? Why am I still following them if they claim, if they state that they are not inspired by God? I I pray from the bottom of my heart that when people hear this beard announcement, I pray that this is an opening, an, an eye-opener for them, right? I pray that Jehovah's Witnesses come to realize, hey, listen, why is it now that it's okay for us to have beards? But... Back in the day, we couldn't. Ten years ago, we couldn't. Five years ago, one year ago, one month ago, we couldn't have beards. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's A-OK. -okay. Why is that? I hope that this is the time that Jehovah's Witnesses start to use their fucking heads and think. I pray that they think for once in their lives. Because as we know, Jehovah's Witnesses, if you are Jehovah's Witnesses, you don't think. Because if you had the ability to, to, to if you had the ability to think... You would not be a Jehovah's Witness. It's that plain and simple. Because if you use your ability to think, you're going to do your research, right? Whether if you have doubts or not, whether if you believe that this was the truth or not, right? You're going to do your research from all different outlets and realize, hey, listen, something's off. These governing body leaders that are supposed to be God's spokesmen, they are now asking for money? They are now shifting their doctrines. They're changing the doctrines from left to right, right to left, up and down, down and up. They, they don't know what they're talking about. They're making it up as they go, right? So where is the common sense? Where's the common sense? As always, when I end my videos, Tell you guys I love you, right? And anyone who's on the fence, any Jehovah's Witness that's having doubts, and there's going to be a lot now. There's going to be a lot now having more doubts than ever because three doctrines, sorry, two doctrines, right? One unwritten. This whole beard thing, it's, a, it's an unwritten doctrine. It's not an official doctrine, right? It was never written. It's not official or whatever. It's not, yes, it's frowned upon, but it's not an official doctrine. You can't get the fellowship for having a freaking beard and a goatee or, you know, the, the Rick Ross beard. You can't get the fellowship for that. Sorry, you couldn't back in the day. Now it's okay, right? But that was never an official rule. It's an unwritten rule, right? But all these changes 
should motivate Jehovah's Witnesses to do their own research. Because as we see, 2023, I'm so happy. Like, apostates are winning. We're doing good right now. Apostates are doing really good. Because we've been telling people all along that these governing body leaders are coming out with new light. This, this new light time after time. And it's not from the Bible. It's not from the scriptures, right? If you can't point me in a Bible where you can find a passage where people are talking about, oh, not wearing facial hair. If you can't find it in the Bible, then I don't want to hear about it. I don't care if you're a governor body leader. I don't care if you're an elder. If it's not in a Bible, I don't want to hear about it. So, all of you JWs, all witnesses are having doubts. You see stuff shifting, right? You see it. This is the time to do your research on Reddit, on YouTube, on Google. This is the time to do a deep dive in your religion. This is the time. Because, you know, this whole beard thing, even though it sounds nice, it sounds appealing. If I was in an organization still, right? And I heard, oh, you can still wear your facial you, you You can now have facial hair. I would do this. The exact thing that I'm doing right now, this whole facial thing. I would do it, right? And I, I would feel confident. But... Deep down, I would say to myself, hold on. Why couldn't I do this 10 years ago? Why got to wait now? Why couldn't I do this 20, 30, 40 years ago? Well, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't alive 40 years ago. <laughs> but why can't I do this in the past? Why all of a sudden now, now, in 2023, this is okay? I would start to ask questions, even if it's just to myself, Right? I would, I would start to have doubts because this makes no sense. And it's obvious that this is not an organization driven or directed by God. This is a man-made organization. So why is it A-OK that we can have beards now? But Jehovah's Witnesses, they couldn't have it 20 or even 10 years ago. Ask yourself that question. These men are supposed to be directed, inspired, sorry, not inspired, directed in God's spokesman, right? They're supposed to be God's spokesman. But yet they are constantly shifting and changing their rules, I guess you could say, right? Their doctrines. Malachi 3, 6. I am God. I do not change. God never changes. Malachi Three, six. Keep that in mind. Love you guys. I'll see you on the next video.